Here's the talk of New York, Tony Ayo. It's your homeboy, Young Buck. And right now, you're on Hip Hop Revival. Yeah, I know what it is. Arts True, True form. form. Don't hate, congratulate. They doing big things. My Honda is the unit! Yeah! Um, I just came back from doing something with Complex. We've been doing a whole bunch of radio promo because the beast is out right now. If you don't got it, pick it up. It's available on iTunes, independent. We getting that independent money now. It's different from a major because it's made more money. And, um, less red tape for us. But um, <laughs> just came back from Complex. Buck just finished doing an interview. Banksy's running around. He got a show. Shout out to Boston. Might yeah. head out there tonight after the snow simmer down. Right. And um, we just working, man. And shout out to Kiki. He in Canada. In Canada. And you know the big boss man. He's in there. You know million dollar meetings, man. Shout he's out to behind y'all. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's behind the camera over yeah, there. Yeah, he's in million dollar meetings right now. Big you know, we stirred him so. And we just said, man, me and Buck, we in town, he's straight from the Ville. We working, pick it up, man. It's man, real bro. It's in the streets right now. You know the streets is talking yeah. right now. Everybody like, yo. It feels like Yeah, yeah, yo, killed you, Buck. I'm like, I know, he's rapping like he never did. Yeah, man. We, you know what I'm saying? They all okay. that. You Buck, know what I'm Buck, Buck been working, man, like, 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 I like these guys for different things, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, Banks, I like him for his local capability. 50, I like him for his, definitely his business mind. Buck, I love this guy for his work ethic. You know what I mean? Drop a record like every other day, just drop over Troy after 50, that's hot. And, and Kid Kid, I, I like him because he's, like he's like a rookie in the vet. You know what I mean? Like he's down with Wayne already, and you know, he's down with us now. And it was kind of more broad and for him because, you know, 50 took him straight to traveling to France, Cairns, Germany, all the places Kid Kid started going. The project came together, you know, me and 50 had our situation, but I just was at a point where I just felt like I was kind of down and emotional, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, 50 and Banks wasn't talking, Chris Lighty passed, I haven't spoken to Buck in a minute. I contacted Buck about a record, you know what I mean? And, and we were just men, and I was like, yo, I apologize for anything I said to you on a manly tip, because we always been like brothers, but the whole thing is like, the difference between us is like, we celebrities, so, like when you have a situation, you might argue with your brother or whoever in your family. It's cool. not going to be worldwide. Like if he argue with, with Fifth, it's going to be a worldwide thing. If I argue, we argue, it's going to be a worldwide thing because our lives are open books. But you know, put all the emotions to the side. You know what I mean? Because we all men, we all brothers. Me and Buck did records. Him and Fifty had their separate conversations. Him and Banks had their separate conversations. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And um. Everything Absolutely. just we just had the summer jam and it's been big from there. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, basically, the, the beauty of the independence and the beast, uh, we recorded both of those EPs. You know, in uh, right after the summer jam, you know, we went straight into the studio and uh, we probably recorded what like thirty some records. Yeah, we got at least about forty. That was like the first week of records yeah. that we initially dropped. You know what I'm saying? But. Fifty being the business mind and having the business mind as he is, I think we was just gonna put it out as a mixtape right. and get Okay. It's like, nah, man, let's do something different. You know what I'm saying? And split these records up and put them out there as EPs just to get a fan something to sit on and wait on until we actually give them the G and it out. Right. Okay. So you know those, these, you know everything we do. I, I really, I don't even really use the mixtape term too much. Because I feel like every everything the G Unit release, everything we do is in album format. Right. You know, it's, it's album material, the, the the feeling of it. It's even though they may come across as mixtape, and we label them as mixtapes, and even some of them are mixtapes with DJs such as Who Kid and Drama and all the other K Slay, all the other DJs that may be on them. We still submit the music in the album format. So you know that stands out with G on it. I think that um, I think the people just uh, the people wanted to see the reunion happen so much. Now that it's happened, right? You yeah, because the power the power of fans is is, is is amazing. Like some days I can say, yo, I just don't even want to do music because all the politics, all the other bullshit that's cool. in the game. But the fans will keep you going. Like yo, listen, man, yo, yeah, you need to drop something. Oh yeah, yeah, yo, y'all need to put that shit aside. You need, you know, fifty need to talk. You thanks, y'all need the summer jam. Like it was so crazy around that summer jam time coming. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but they knew 50 was coming out. It was the question of who's coming out. Who's coming mm -hmm. out? Because at that time, I had a record playing on radio with Troy Ave, so Troy Ave wanted me to come out with him. Yeah. But I really didn't want to say nothing, but I mm -hmm. already knew I was coming out with Fifth. Shout out to Troy Ave, too. You know, they dope artists. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I didn't really want to put it out there that I was going to come out because me and 50 make whatever was in the bar. I knew that was going to happen anyway. Um, we're working on all that now, you know, I mean, it's just all on everybody's time period because, you know, Buck might have his own dates, mm -hmm. Banks always has his own dates, I always have my own dates, and Fifth is, you know, busy shooting power and everything else, so, and Kid Kid, like, he's in Canada now, that's why he's not here, shout out to Kid Kid. I think, like, um... But a tour should be coming, though. Yeah, I think it'll be coming. Because this all right here is the appetizer, we got, yeah. like... We got like two more albums worth of stuff, maybe three more albums worth of material. Like that. I think right now these records was dope, but like I think the main course man. It's just a warm up. Yeah. It's the warm up. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. This is platinum. Yeah, this it's is platinum good material. material. It's, it's good material, good. but uh, you know this is the warm up. And uh, I think honestly, man, you know 50's coming after this. Yeah, Street King of Mortar. Street King, King of Mortar is coming after this, and then uh, of course, you know, we're gearing up to get ready to tour. But even before you get to Street King of Mortar, uh, I would be, I would probably say you're gonna hear Lloyd Banks and a Yayo tape. Okay. You know, I'm just, I'm being honest. I'm, I'm, I'm putting the gamble in there because Yayo is all the way ready. Banks is all the way ready. You understand what I'm saying? And we did, and as well as Kid Kid. So, you know, a lot of people is jumping on the Before the Beast mixtape. I put out the Before the Beast, and this basically was the, uh, there was a gap in between the release of this. Uh, uh, shout uh, out to the Boosie, Beast. shout out to Trade the Truth. Okay. Believe that, shout out to Boosie, Trade the Truth, Yo Gotti. Yeah, Yo Gotti. Uh, okay. You know, all the, all the cast that showed up, Reese, Lil Reese uh, out of Shot Town. You know, I, that the before the beast mixtape was basically like a a, a, a pre a pre sequel to this. Okay. It's like okay, we put out the beauty of independence. The fans show love and went and spent their hard earned money for that. Let's give them some. Mm -hmm. We gave them that, and then here we go right back with the beast mm -hmm. on iTunes and in every store for you to go get. And um, I think I just kicked the door open for my brothers because these boys is so loaded with material and got so much. We got too much material to the point where. I think we, we have to stay in that give to get. Yeah, we get. It, it, you know and saying? it's crazy you want to give the fans, you know, material for free, but at the end of the day, we in the business and so we learn, you know, that everything can't be for free. And that's what I was saying with 50's business mind point to mind. Yeah. Like, yo, y'all giving, like, he, yo, y'all giving too much music away for free, selling on iTunes, selling here. Because, you know, that's the way we came up and that's the way we was really doing. Yeah. I think I started a new format in a sense too, you know, with the before the beast mixtape. Most mixtapes, you're gonna catch mixtapes out here that's 12, 14 songs and even more. You know, this was the first time I've ever released a mixtape that they only had seven records on it. Yeah. But it's like I, a mixtape EP. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. And you know, like I say it was something new, but it also taught me something. You know, I look at the numbers now on all of the, the different sites. Uh you know that I can kind of get my eyes on as far as the downloads and things of that nature. And being that the product was given for free, I realized and see how great my download numbers are versus the views, you know, or the streams. And it lets me know that this, you know, that the material that we are releasing are something that the people actually want because they're actually downloading it and keeping it mm -hmm. versus just, you know, streaming it and playing it off the site. So that, that lets me know, you know, I'm in a good place with the music, you know, and all we gotta do is continue uh, giving the fans what they want. You know, G-Unit has always had hit records and we will always continue to have hit records over here. I think that the game uh, is shifting to the music that we make. That we yeah, that's right, I, I don't even, to the I don't even, you know what I think? I think, like I always say, I think it's, it's, it's not about the for now, it's about the marathon. Mm -hmm. Like, how many artists have you seen come out with that dope record yeah. and, and can't? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy when. Right. when, when they can't keep up. Yeah, they can't right, keep right. Up. So you it's like, I'm it, like, I'm a fan of hip hop at the end of the day, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, me yeah. and Banks talk about this all the time. Rock him, Coogee rap. 
Big Daddy Kane. I remember going to mm -hmm. the store. I remember going to Jamaica Avenue to Hot Wax mm -hmm. and going to buy a DJ. I told Clue that the other night, like going to buy a DJ Cool. Like, Cool, you a legend, Grandmaster Vic, um, um, Dog Time. Like, I'm a fan of music anyway. It was yeah. like when, when, I remember 51st Rhyme was in my man Rough Head's basement and we used to be in there and I used to DJ too. So like every new record that came, Wax, like it was just something about just going to the store, buying the CD and reading the credits. I'm a fan of hip hop as well as him as he's a fan of hip hop. All the artists he loves, Scarface, UGK, on his side. And I love him too. But you know what I mean, coming from the South, you know what I mean? Like, and me coming from here, from New York. So it's like, for me, man, it's, it's not about what's the finale, it's about the marathon. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what a, a wise man, Harvey, Brother said that from Interscope worked real hard. And he always told me, yeah, it was about the marathon. So you just still be here and have relevancy and still have fans. You go to Dubai, go to uh, Germany, go here. Like, when I, I remember a long time ago, we ran into Jay Rue the Damage, bro. Mm -hmm. He was doing shows overseas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boys to Men, that's R&B, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. That's amazing to me. Like, that's crazy. That's why I like, Still getting I, love, I love doing shows in the US, but overseas it's like a different feeling because mm -hmm. it be people that don't even understand English and hip hop is so big. Look how, look how far hip hop took us. Because at the end of the day, it's about hip hop. It's not about what girl you messing with or what car you drive or what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's about good music, it's about hip hop. Definitely. The whole game changed where you don't need no street credibility because really ain't no more goons on your back. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I remember going to the Columbia building and seeing E Money bags and these dudes. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, it was a lot of street dudes that was out here yeah. that was kind of putting pressure on the game. Like, yeah, it was the streets was involved in it. Yeah, so now I feel like it's not even like that no more. No. Nah. You know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> street credibility really doesn't mean it's more. Exactly. All you need is a dope record. There ain't nothing wrong for that. You don't have to be that kind of person. That's you as you, as long as you being you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know what he's saying. Some dudes act, you know, as being somebody else and they're not them. You know what I'm saying? But it's like with the unit, you know, it's all, it's all, like, it's all real. Like, for instance, I had federal agents knock on my door yeah. about the henchman case. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, he just got out of federal prison. So like, it's, till this day, it's still real. This last year that just passed, before going to New Year, because of all the henchman bullshit, I had federal agents knocking at my door. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all real and there's different experiences for us and for him and for Fifth and as well as Banks. It's real life experiences. And that's Ever what, since we've been the unit. That's what it's been real. Know about it. right. So I mean like now nobody really cares about your street credibility. You know what I mean? Like, dudes were scared of big pun back in the day. It's like, you heard your stories. Like, Why do you think that is, though? Why? What, 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 what? Like, what do you think? You think it's a certain artist out there? Or? I just think things just transition. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think, I, honestly, I think, I think it they, 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 they transition. Uh, what well, people fail to realize is that this, and I don't mean to cut you off here, is that I just feel like it's a different generation. I mean, like, we like, got 10 years, over 10 years in the game. That's we came in 2003, bro. Like 50 was talking about how um, The kids that were kids when we first dropped. <laughs> right. Are now teenagers. And I'm not saying all look, wrong. But look, bro, I'm not saying it's not real in the streets or the industry. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, because you got street dudes that's you know that's street mm -hmm. that really is about that life. You got dudes around them that's about that life. I'm just saying it was a little bit wilder back then. Without a doubt. That's like Fifty shooting in the club. Without a doubt. Should Knight come up on a, on the set with 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 bad Mexican bloods or whatever mm -hmm. it was. You know what I'm saying? Street. And dudes had tattoos <laughs> on their face. And like, like real shit, like everybody was happening. Oh, shoot here. You know what I'm saying? Shoot here. Like, everybody won. My experience is different. <laughs> like, like, where this nigga at? You know what I mean? Like, my experience was different in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was there when, when, not to, because Jive, you know, but I was there when 50 punched him in the eye and had to change. Mm. You know what I mean? So, my, like, my experience is crazy through the industry from Columbia days. Being around a big homie, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But those are all experiences in life, and you just realize sometimes things change. Like right now, like I said, you don't need street credibility to be a dope rapper. 
Mm-hmm. They don't. And without a doubt. And then but at the times you was coming up, like you said, you had, you had to, to have it. You like had to have it. It was experiences There was like no way. Running the dudes like Haitian Jack. You know what I'm saying? You the streets the wasn't even going to allow you. you running like, the, running the scooters, the tuts. They was around. Like Put it fifth, this way. When I was around fifth, like we would go to Columbia and you would run around. You would see them niggas scooter, Jack. Them niggas were some crazy looking niggas from Brooklyn. <laughs> You know what I mean? Them niggas was around, and, and those were the those were real niggas, my nigga. E money. You really wouldn't like, be able to make a career for yourself without the streets being able to identify with the things. Right, it's just different. Mm-hmm. It's different. Like, yeah. like, like, even with Fifty, his experiences, everybody knew his beef. Everybody knew what kind of beef he had. Everybody knew he got shot up. But people respected from Queens. I respected that this motherfucker would jump in his minivan, come to New York by himself. I'm not gonna say if he had anything on him or if he didn't. <laughs> he come to New York and he kept doing what he had to do. Cause the average man after he would have got shot would have been too scared to even come outside to even either deal with the situation or run from it. And he didn't decided to deal with the situation. And look where it took us. I remember listening to Get Rich Dot Trying in 50's grandma's crib. It's, I, sometimes for me, it all happened too fast for me. Like, it just re- doesn't register. And people be like, yo, yeah, you'll never change. Some people never change. It happened so fast for me, bro. Hmm. And, and I felt like it was a lot of hate on the unit because our success was so big. Hmm. It was just so crazy. And it's not yeah. like we came in the game on some, you know what I mean? Yeah. Rubbing people. <laughs> we was rubbing a couple people the wrong way. It is what it is. But it's yeah. like, look where we at now. And it's like, you old. Now I look back and I'll be like, yo, thank God. Like, we blessed. No matter what we go through, I argue with 50, I argue with him. We blessed, man. You know how many people was dead in jail? Not him. Or doing the same thing in the hood? Huh? <laughs> I mean, Fuck I all the politics. You, hey, dude, you should just feel I like tell yeah, you, all you know what I tell these dudes now? You know, I'm going to be 100. And yeah, can vouch for me on this, you know, a lot of these dudes pop, pop this shit in the movie, and it's cool because, like I say, man, the shit that you say, man, it's got to be a part of you in some kind of way because it's, it's a part of you once it come out your mouth. And in prison, the shit that you do determines if you're going to be able to let anything come out your mouth. So it's two different, it's two different lives. When you go take your life from this life, right? And for Ye, it was a little bit different because everything blowed for Ye while he was in prison. Mm-hmm. So it's like Ye sitting in prison, a, a full-blown celebrity out here, bro. He got Eminem running out with free Ye shirts. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So the experience that Ye had in prison is something that no nobody could ever mm-hmm. really, unless, right. yeah, was, it's not an artist that I can really think of that can really I capitalize never, and give you yeah. the feeling of being that bro. I think the closest mm. thing was 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 Little Wayne getting out of jail. And I wouldn't but, I but really wouldn't even get off of Rikers. But for me, it was bigger for me because like I said, Eminem, like he said he wore a free Yale shirt and I was on Rikers Island C seventy three too low. And that was like amazing for me because the support I got from them, from from Banks, Buck, Yale, I mean from fifty, like I didn't have to get it. So I've always been appreciative and I always stood by the brand. Most of my beefs have been because of supporting the brand. But yeah. it is what it is. If you with your with, team, um, you gotta be with your team. And that's what I live by and that's what I die by. Yeah, you know man, I mean? with, 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 with Ye experience and the, the time that he did in prison yeah. and, and having, you know, things blow up for G Unit at the time. It's crazy. Man. You know, I know that was a different experience for him. For my prison experience, for me to have become a full-blown celebrity, right. you know, and then walk into prison with all the things that come along with Young Buck in the streets before g Unit and all the things that come along with me with g Unit right. to go into prison with that on you. My experience in prison was a little bit different than, than anyone, than, than anybody would actually, unless, unless you actually went to a facility where it was as real as the one I went to. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't get to walk with all respect to anyone that may done, done a prison bid. I, I wasn't blessed to go to the camp 
or to one of those prisons where it was not a prison. I, I was really in the real yard. I really walked the yard. I was the one that the, that the warden had to come down and say, hey man, are you seriously, I mean, you, you seriously not considering PC? Do you really realize who you are? Yeah, I know who I am. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm an inmate. Two zero six six nine zero seven five. I'm just like the other dudes out there on the yard. Let me out here to them. Fifth, you know, he's been doing music. You know, shout out to Corey Rooney. Go to Corey Rooney's shop, and that was the first person he gave his tape to. So, like, it's crazy, man, the whole situation. Because I've been with Fifth, like, since the Columbia system. You know what I mean? So I've seen him hustle, grind, go to Columbia every day. Dolo, put in that work. He always been that type of nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. when you tell me, yeah, you need to work more, I understand why. Because he worked 20 times harder than me, because I'm not the same person he, he is. Sometimes, the public put that pressure on you, like, yo, 50 said you don't work enough. Yo, 50 is not even human. <laughs> Get it? Everybody Get it? keeps talking about The public it. wants that. They want it. I'm not mad if New York City want it. Maybe we can't have it, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's all on, you know, the bosses. Okay. I would tell them, um... We always say consistency is the key to everything. We always say that. Like, everybody in the group always say that because that's what we live by. But I would say, um, know how to invest your money. Like, like for instance, if you're a new artist, and instead of you, like, uh, going to buy Jordans or going out to the strip club or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Any which way you're getting, you grind it, you hustle, whatever. Invest your money in like buying a camera, shooting a video, having your, your videos on websites and different kind of things, instead of investing your money in the material things. You know what I mean? Know how to invest your money. I'm coming with our solos, the Street King Immortal. I'm coming with El Chapo. He got a whole bunch of joints. He about to, I don't know he's going to title his new joint, Before the Beast was the last one. Um, you know, Banks got the uh, highly anticipated Cold Corner. And um, Kid Kid New Orleans. Okay. And and, and and we got two more, maybe three more G unit albums that we ain't even. And, and those, it's like those records, I would love for a G unit album in Street King Immortal, but that'd be cool with me. <laughs> Look out for Street King Immortal, uh, Frigo Underwear, F and Vodka. We got the Beach Drinks get made now from a lovely lady. She's a mixologist. Um, that's good. You know, my, I like the Black Cherry. Pick that up. Uh, Boy, got the new music coming out. I got El Chapo, Cold Corner, New Orleans. And yo, book us shows, iTunes, you know, whatever, man. Tony Ayo, Instagram, Twitter. Bang, 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 bang. We on that. We active. We out here. Bang, bang, bang. Reached out now. Look out for that new